good day, and thank you for joining Rags to Riches for a seminar we are, where we are going to teach the trainer in your company who trains people how to clean residential homes, how to train every single person who walks in your door to clean a home in the same way and receive the same consistent results. Or in other words, we're going to show you how to effectively implement a house cleaning process. But before I can do that, I need to convince each and one of you why it's important to train. I do not want this webinar to be like many of the things that you hear at conventions, read in magazines, buy books to do that never gets implemented. It's important to your company that every one of the people in your company knows how to clean a house with quality and efficiency, and that is the first thing that happens in your company, the number one priority. Why? Because if you train, you will automatically receive higher productivity from the day they begin, because you've taught them the skills they need to do their job. If you have a process, and if you don't, then you need to find a process the best process there is right now available to clean a home and follow that process each and every time and show your cleaners how to do that same process each and every time. If you do that from the beginning, you will greatly reduce the cost of, of cleaning your homes at a much faster pace, which allows you to be more competitive in the market because a lot of this has to do with how fast can you bring up new people whether or not you have a turn turnover issue or you have a growth issue where you need more people to clean more houses. Either way, it's all about getting those people up to speed as fast as possible for quality. If you train also rather than just throwing them out there or doing a not a thorough cleaning, training job, which I'm going to talk about what thorough is today, the quality is going to improve. Customers are quality conscious. Although I will say, now that I'm doing cross-country training where I actually go out and train uh, owners, employees in the field, I do not believe they're as quality conscious as they were when I was running a cleaning service. I can tell you right now that if my – the homes I went to, I went to customers these clients had for a long time. Their clients were happy. I'm going to tell you right now, if that's the way I clean my clients' homes, I would not have them anymore. So the quality expectations have lowered. You need to at least meet what they're doing now, but if you can leave them with more than what they expect, which gives them a wow experience, a remarkable experience, they're going to remark about their experience and go to Craigslist and Angie's List and start posting great reviews about you because they truly are blown away with your cleaning. And that's the way it should be. And a quality process driven, efficiency driven way to clean a home will give you those results every single time. In order to keep a repeat client base, though, remember, you can't just go in there and wow them once. And a lot of companies do go in there. When they do a deep clean, they don't miss anything. It's when they go in to maintain it that they start missing things consistently and those things build up. And what you really want to do in this industry is to satisfy your customers consistently consistently, continuously, so that you can get yourself a repeat client base built. That's the name of the game. That's how you build a multi-million dollar company. There's also a huge reduction in learning time. You, If you throw somebody out there and you don't do the training process the way it needs to be done or you don't do it at all and just have them clean homes with the knowledge they came to you with, there's, it's going to take a very long time for this person to get up to speed, if they ever do. Um, and there's such a growing demand for service that you want these people to be up to speed and giving quality service immediately so that you feel, number one, confident in selling your services. I've worked with many clients who, before they worked with me and got the quality where it needs to be, were afraid to go um, advertise and push, excuse me, their services because they were not proud of it. And but once you start doing this, you're going to have a waiting list of prospective clients. Many of you do. So you need cleaners that are ready to go yesterday. You've got to reduce the learning time. It can't take you one, two, three weeks to train a new employee. They've got to be up to speed much faster than that. 
You don't have the time, and it's very expensive if you wait that long. Also, if you train, you're going to have very much less breakage and damage from the start because you're training these people what they're supposed to do in order to how to clean a home and, and not have a lot of breakage. Uh, you're going to train them the products and what they need to use for each service so you won't have any damage there. You're going to teach them to always have one hand free when they're following your process so that if something does start falling, no fault of theirs, they can catch it. Also, because they're using a system that makes sense, they're going to be less fatigued and less stressed at the end of the day. Also, you know, you get some of your people who have never cleaned the house professionally before, and they don't have a clue about things like aprons and how you use an apron in a home and how, many, how much more quality driven it makes you and how much more efficient it is and how less tired they'll be. Um, they don't know microfiber rags and how to use microfiber rags and not to get a dusting rag next to a windexing or a shining rag. They've never done long dusting in a home. Many women do not have long dusters or know about long dusting. My mother certainly didn't. The cobwebs just grew and so sometimes she would take a broom and time knock them down. And they certainly don't know a cleaning process. The top to bottom, left to right, falling around the room and not ever missing anything. These things have to be trained to them if you want an efficient, quality-driven person right from the start. One of the most important reasons for training is a topic that's just huge today. How do you get people to stay? How do you get them to come to work if they don't come to work every day? Well, statistics show that people who are trained well when they begin their job have a feeling of confidence, and so they like coming to work because they feel like they know what they're doing. They feel safe and secure at the workplace because you've taken enough time to show them what to do so they know how they could not lose their job and how they can keep it and what they can do right and what they can do wrong. Uh, ultimately, the turnover and the absenteeism rates are reduced greatly because of the security and the trust that this employee has with your company, which I talk about all the time when I talk about the five steps your employee goes through before they are just followed the punches with your company and management material. It also sets the ground for effective management. Um, it's actually an effective planning and controlling tool. You are letting your new employee know from the time they walk in the door that you have processes in your company and you want those processes to be followed. Come to work every day, um, wear your company uniform, wear your name tag. But also, clean a home exactly the way I teach you to clean this home so that nothing is missed. If they know that from the first day and they know everybody cleans the home exactly the same way, it's just cut and dry, that's the way it's done, it still reduces, reduces the need for supervision. You don't have to worry about whether or not they clean that because you know they followed your process and they did because it's part of the process. Training increases productivity and quality. And product, productivity and quality are the two benchmarks that you have to have in your company in order to make your company grow and be profitable. So what's the purpose of training? Actually, the purpose of training is to impart your wisdom onto people who have not cleaned before or may have cleaned before. If the individuals have cleaned before, it doesn't really matter because you have to make sure they clean with your process because they perhaps have come from a company. And let's face it, they're coming from a company, so something made them leave that company and come to you. Was it lack of growth? Was it, was it lack of quality, but they didn't know how to make it any better because nobody trained them how to do that? But if you have an individual who comes to you who has cleaned before, you, have, you still have to impart your knowledge and your system on them. Or if it's a person who's never cleaned before and you're starting with the basics, basically zero knowledge baseline, you teach them everything about cleaning the house. The process is absolutely mandatory because they're coming to you with really no common sense. Now, when somebody has experience, this has a huge impact. Quality has to be trained. The process that delivers quality has to be trained in the beginning. But once it's trained correctly, it, has, it improves very little with experience. If they know it, it can't get any better than it already is. What can improve with experience is their efficiency. They can get faster and faster and faster the more they do it. 
So the real question is how far should training go before people are let loose to gain the experience that they're going to need to improve their efficiency? I would say after two days, including the orientation process, the in-house orientation process, that these people should be ready to go on their own and that the rest of it is just going to take about 30 days before they gain the speed that you would like to see them have in a home with the quality you want to see them have. So the objectives of house cleaning training are many. What, what do you want, what's your objective? What do you want to see happen here? You want to provide the cleaning job knowledge to the cleaner. You want to part your skills among the cleaners systematically so every single cleaner is cleaning, has the same skills and is cleaning exactly the same way. It will also make them learn it quicker because when they see it in the office and then they, on your videos and then they go out in the field and they see it used by the cleaners, they're going to click on, get done very fast. You're also going to train, and this is huge in your attrition problem, your turnover problem with your internal clients or your cleaner, is you want to bring about change in the attitudes of the cleaners, the other cleaners towards this new cleaner. Also towards you as a management. Because you take the time to train. You care enough about the people who are working with you right now that you're not going to make them have to clean and try and train and keep up their speed and get all their houses done too. You're going to give up what you have that day and you're going to teach this new person so that or you are big enough to have a person dedicated to training in your company and you're willing to give up your bottom line income and profit and your new car for yourself to hire that field manager or that trainer and really field manager so that that cleaner in the field who's already working for you doesn't have all this extra stress and strain. They also, when you take this person and give it to them, they know they're fully trained and they aren't going to feel like they have to do that, so they're automatically going to like this person a lot more. They aren't adding stress to their lives. Instead, they're probably reducing it because they probably needed another person and now they have two people rather than one or three person people rather than two, and they don't have to work quite so hard during the day. It'll improve, it'll improve the productivity of the cleaners and your company, and we talked about that because they know what they're doing. But it'll also include the, improve the productivity of the entire team because the other team members are very happy because, they again, they didn't have all that stress of having to train this new person. It'll reduce the amount of breakage and damage um, because you're providing an apron training where they can have this hands-free. Um, and it will make the workers follow process efficiently. So they're going to check <coughs> their wastage of time and make sure that they continue to meet your efficiency criteria because we've talked about it. I want to talk a bit about multiple task training. This is where you take one person. If, if This is particularly if you have solos where they need to learn how to do the kitchen, the dusting, and the bathroom. Um, the, um, if you're trying to train all three areas, for example, if you have videos and you have them watch those three areas on a video and then go out and try this, is multiple, multiple task training. You're teaching them three different areas. The amount of, of, of material to recover is way too much. Actually, you could prevent the cleaner from thoroughly understanding of the process because they never got it done thoroughly in one room. And top to bottom, left to right, around the room is a process. Once they get it in dusting or in bathrooms or in kitchens and they really know it well there, it is very easy to slide that over to another area. But if they get confused and they've watched all three, because even though it's easy to slide, it is different in little tweaked ways, they'll be so confused they won't be able to do any room and they'll never get anything done correctly. If you want them to quickly gain the experience, and know this one, know, that, know your process, then teach them effectively in one task and then move on to the next one. That's very important. A little more time consuming, yes, because you have to take the time to get this one down and then either go back to the office. However, if you have videos, you can take the la your laptop with you and show it to them in the field and then go into the next arena, which I did in some of my cross-country training. So quality training is really a two-part process. 
the first part is orient the orientation in the office, your employee handbook, signing the paperwork, telling your policies and procedures, all of those things, job descriptions. The other half is the actual cleaning technique. And that is what I'm going to talk about today is the actual training technique. It's the processes and procedures that you use in the field. It's the actual cleaning process. But keep in mind that quality training is the entire process. You cannot have one without the other. You have to have a quality orientation process and you have to have a quality tech cleaning technique process. So, if you are a trainer, your role as a trainer is to influence other people. Is it not? Because what's influence is the ability to change another person's thoughts, beliefs, and actions. If you bring a person into your company who has never used an apron and you follow what I believe to be the only best process of cleaning, which is utilizing an apron, then you're going to have to convince that person that that is true. You have to change their thoughts. They have to believe, oh, I didn't used to use an apron. Stupid of me. I should have looked at how handy it is. You have to change their beliefs. And that's the, their belief. You have to get them believing in the apron time after time after time, time, time again. And that, of course, requires them changing their actions to see where the apron and use the apron are two different things. They have to really change what they're doing. So really, people are successful at training our influencers because they get a person to change the way they think and the way they believe and the way they perform cleaning a home. So if you are a person of influence, if you can influence this person to lift, to believe in what you're saying, you can change their thoughts, beliefs, and actions, they're going to listen to you. But they have to look at you as a person of influence. And if it makes sense, and it's because now they've tried it with an open mind, they're going to use it for the rest of their life because why wouldn't they? It just makes sense. So because you need a person of influence in your company, somebody who is really going to be able to influence this new person's thoughts, beliefs, and actions, you have to use the best person to deliver the training to deliver the message to the new employee. You need, so choosing your trainer is the most important thing you can do in your company. This is the most important thing you do. Do this right and everything else will fall into place. You don't have to worry about selling so many because you're going to keep what you sell. It's just going to, you don't have to worry about management. They're going to manage them, they're cleaning themselves. If they're trained right. So choosing your trainer is very important. The person you choose has to be knowledgeable. They must know your system by heart because they have to train it. The train, trainee can't know it better than them. Or they can't stand in the room and go, oh, gosh, I wonder what you are supposed to do here, because they will lose their person of influence stature. It will look like they don't know what they're doing because they don't know what they're doing. And they must not deviate from the system because this employee, this new cleaner, has learned this system, and if you deviate from it in any way, you confuse them. This new person, this trainer must be enthusiastic about your company, enthusiastic about the way you clean, enthusiastic about how fun your company is, how great this job is, because they're going to set the example for the trainee. They are their mentor. They are their support. And they need to be supported and be constantly complimenting and encouraging. They also need to be somebody who's available for single focus. They need to never take their eye off of this person. They can't be cleaning and going in to see how they're doing every now and then. They can't be texting somebody or answering phones or stepping out to sell a client. Whoever does your training has to be dedicated to this one person for an entire day. I, of course, suggest that that trainer be you, the owner, if you are a company who is, doesn't have a field manager yet, who is totally dedicated to doing that. You can, if you want, have a supervisor do it. But if you do that, that supervisor cannot clean that day. They cannot talk to the clients that day. They can't do anything that day but work with this brand new person. And if the team runs behind, they cannot be the one to step in and try and pick up the slack. They have to train this new person. Preparation. Make sure you're prepared for this new person. Make sure you have all the training and cleaning tools prepared and purchased. 
I mean, people will buy cords. They're ready to clean it, take it off. They're so excited, so they kick it off, and they don't have all the tools yet. Well, if you give a person a system that requires a tool and they don't have the tool, you've sabotaged your own system, basically saying to them, ah, well, it doesn't really matter if you don't do this because we don't have the tool anyway. And then they're going to go, well, then it probably doesn't matter if I don't do that. I mean, it's just insane. Do not kick anything off until you're ready to go. Define what acceptable quality is. Make sure that your people know what you're expecting from them and how you're going to measure their, their level of quality. Define their efficiency rate, what you're expecting from them. No, it won't be there today, but tell them how you're going to measure it against what benchmarks. When do you expect them to be cleaning as fast as anybody who's done this for five years? And show them that those goals are achievable. Show them what people are cleaning at the rate they're cleaning at network quality who have been there for five years. Do not include anything in this training that does not have to do with training, cleaning, like no supervisor paperwork, no other paperwork. Once you start the house cleaning training, it's all about house cleaning training and nothing else, no customer service, nothing. You can only train one cleaner at a time. You can have multiple new employees gathered together for the orientation part, the first 50% and the policies, and you can even show them if you're using core training module one and module five, which is before you pick up a rag, which is once again some basic common sense things in a home, and number five, which is bed floors and wrap up. But only one can watch learn how to do the kitchen at a time, only one can learn how to do a bath at a time, and only one can learn how to do dusting at a time. Then issue their supplies. Uh, use an etcher and put their names on the supplies and aprons so they take uh, ownership of it. In, I believe every person should be given an apron, a razor blade scraper, or you can give them a magic eraser, a tile brush, a feather duster, and a whisk broom. Have a cleaner sign paperwork saying that they have these supplies and the cost of each one of them if they lose them. And audit these supplies on a weekly basis, plus their apron. When you do your one-on-ones and you give them their paychecks, just have them bring you their apron with their four supplies. Because if they don't have those, then they obviously are not following your process anymore and you know exactly who you need to go out and work with and talk to possibly more important to talk to because they know what they're doing, they've just chosen not to. They know what they're supposed to do and they've just chosen not to. Um, then you actually sit down and start the training process. You're going to, um, if you have videotapes, which I recommend that you have, um, and I'll go into that a little bit later why I recommend you have them, but tell the trainee what, media, what the media portion is going to cover. Um, tell them what to look for, what to remember. Explain why they're watching these um, videos. And basically what you need to tell them is they're going to watch this video two times. Then you're going to go out and watch them. So they need to watch this in great detail. Where do they put their bucket when they get into the room? Where do they start? What tools do they need to have? What's the next thing they do? They need to learn this process so that when they go out there and remember it, so when they go out there, they can do it because you're not going to tell them what to do. You expect them to be able to do it themselves, to remember what they watch. If you explain that to them before they watch it, they will be more receptive to the information. They will be taking notes. They will try very hard to remember. Otherwise, they think they're just going to watch this, and then they're going to go out and teach them, and teach them how to do it. No, this is what's going to teach them how to do it, get them engaged. And have them watch one media portion once and then talk about the key points in that media portion. Go over with them and say, okay, where did they start in the kitchen? What's the next thing they did? What's the next thing they did? Relate at this time any information the trainees may need to know, for example, things that are different from your system than, than maybe core, if you're using core. I had a client who uh, said he used Bonamy instead of Comet. The product isn't important, but I did recommend to him that he go out and buy a can of Comet and set it next to the Bonamy and set that in front of the employees so when they're watching it, they see the product we're using and the product they're going to use at your company instead. So it becomes very natural for them to make that transition and to think about what they need to pick up when they're out in the field. Uh, Test 
after they watch the media portion. And inform that them they're going to take a quiz in advance of going out to the home. When they get done, they'll take a quiz. And if they can't pass the quiz, they're not going to go out to the home. Statistics show that it's more effective when students know they're going to be quizzed because, again, they're going to pay closer attention to the materials that they're looking at, just like when you tell them they're going to have to go out there and implement it right away. And it's also an objective way to determine whether or not they absorbed what you showed them. So I would recommend you show them the video once. You have them to answer the questions at the end of the video. You show them the video again, during which time they fill out a field manual that I have and fill in the blanks, and then they actually go to the field because repetition helps the cleaner grasp and retain this information. And writing it down will engage them. Filling in the blanks will engage them in, in this uh, process. Discuss their cleaning habits if they're experienced cleaners, what's different from this than the way they used to clean, and then explain to them why this process would be faster than the process they used to use and be more quality driven. Make sure you structure enough time in this period to have some interaction with the person. Don't just throw it at them and then go. Talk to them about the differences and the improvements and, and how people enjoy this process and how it gives so much more quality. Then immediately go to a home. This is extremely important. Have all, do not stop for lunch. Make sure you have all your cleaning supplies prepared before you watch the DVD so you can get immediately in that car and hit a house. Because the narrower the window of time, the less that they will forget. Because there is a very narrow window of retention. If it's not used immediately, believe me, they forget. If you send them home for the evening and come back the next morning, send them, show them the videotape all over again before you go out. I can tell you that when people come to Hill Country Harvest and we watch the videos, and then we come, if we only watch it once, and then we come in the house to clean, which is from my training center to the house, uh, the owner has totally forgotten <laughs> where to start. And most of them look at me and say, can I watch that again? Because you just don't remember, and going through it once does not give you enough of a chance to really watch the process because it is a process. If it was that simple, everybody would be doing it, and you wouldn't have to train it. So it is a process. It's a little a little bit awkward at first when you haven't done it. So training also, I highly recommend that with a new person, you train and repeat homes in the beginning. It'll be easier to establish a pattern and a process. Um, 30 homes, one-time homes, you really use the same process, but it's a lot more scrubbing, so they don't get as much experience in the process. You want to, like if they're dusting, you want them to be able to dust rapidly and get them the process and the, and the, the speed down. And then they can always scrub hard. It's the pattern you're looking for. Clear homes also give, um, a very poss a better possibility that the the new person who's never cleaned houses before won't hate it at the end of the first day. I mean, if, if they're scrubbing these really dirty houses by the end of the first day, they're going to be like, I hate this stop. Put them in some beautiful homes that you clean on a regular basis that are more like a wipe down. Get them to love this job and see how much fun it can actually be. Because you know what? If they're good and they keep their customers happy, they can have a repeat client base of 25 to 30 same clients every single week. And it is fun. Lots of my cleaning teams have that. But do be honest with them. When you do this, say, hey, not every job, job is going to be like this. These are my repeat clients, and I'm starting you off because I want you to learn the process, and honestly, I want you to love the job. But you will run into some dirty homes. I do want to be honest with you. So when you're in the home training, you have to absolutely glue yourself to your cleaner. The first five minutes when you get into the home are the most important five minutes with them. If you don't focus on that cleaner, they will literally run away from you, especially if they have any experience. So if there's a client home, you need to tell that client right away, hey, you're training, and if they have any issues or, or how's the cleaning going, you'd like to touch bases with them about the cleaning later, but right now you've got to be, you're training, you need to be with this new person. Don't help any other cleaner with something. If you do have to stop and touch with somebody, tell your cleaner to stop. Do not let them do one more thing. Because, you know, if you have an experienced cleaner with you and 
they're maybe going to clean the kitchen. By the time you get done talking to this client, you're going to be in that kitchen, and they're going to be halfway done with the kitchen, and they don't even have their apron on yet because it's not a habit. You need to be in there with them, making sure that, that ha the old habits are broken and the new habits go in place. You need to make sure they're starting in the right spot. When they begin the room, the bathroom and the kitchen personal wall will start by the sink, the dusting personal wall will start by the door. Where are they starting? In the middle of the room? This is key and difficult for training. trainers. Do not speak until the trainer does something wrong. This is the biggest lesson learned by owners and managers who come to my branch for training is they just want to show you how to do it. Like as soon as you, we always role play and one is the clean, one of the owners and managers is the cleaner and another one is the trainer. And that trainer automatically wants to walk in that room and say, okay, now you're going to clean the mirror and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait a second. They know what they're going to clean. So step back and let this person do it. Do not tell them where to start. See where they're going to start. And don't take the pressure off of them. If they look at you and go, well, Say, well, where do you start? And make them think it through. Where did the video start? Think back to the video. Where did it start? Do not automatically tell a dusting person by the door. What did the video do? What do you need to do next? Don't answer their questions without them first thinking about what they need to answer. Never take a rag out of their hand and show them how to do it. Tell them how to do it, but never once did you touch a rag which takes me to why you should have video. If you want to be looked at as a person of influence, and a person of influence is someone and, will, and really change their mind about their thoughts, their beliefs, their habits, the way they clean, following their system, if you want them to look at you as a person of influence, because that's what you need to be for them to follow you, then they have to want to be just like you. Because most people want to be just like people who are in people have influences in their lives. They're their mentors. They want to look like you. They want to talk like you. They want to be just like you. Well, if you are cleaning and they are watching you clean, why would they want to be just like you? They already are just like you. Get yourself a video. Have them watch the videos. Then you watch them. And believe me, they will someday want to have your job, and they will do anything they need to do to be in line for that, even if you are the owner. So watch them. Never take a rag out of their hand. Don't let them see you with a rag in your hand. And never tell the cleaner what to do next unless they do it wrong. Let them make the mistake, because otherwise they're going to look at you and say, I was going to do that. So if you want to know what I mean by a video that they can watch and then replicate, if you want to go to www.successmadeeasy.com and go to the toolbar across the top, it will say DVD samples or training samples, and you can click on that and watch seven minutes of each module, and there's five, of how to clean a house. The first one is before you pick a rag, up a rag, and the last one is, as I said, uh, beds, floors, and wrap-ups. But the kitchen, the bath, and the dusting is what I'm talking about here. And I'm going to go into what is an actual process for cleaning. And there is a process. It's something you follow every single time. So I'm going to go through dusting for you. When you're going to be dusting, the first thing you must do is prepare the clean. Just walk in there and pick up a rag and go. You get your apron, you put it on. Your ape, then you get your small tile brush. It probably will already be in your apron, but in there you need a small tile brush, like a, a toothbrush, but one just a little bit plastic, but a little bit stronger than a toothbrush. Uh, a razor blade scraper, or as I said, you can use a magic eraser. Each one is scary. Uh, a feather duster for one pocket and a whisk broom for the other pocket one dusting rag and one glass cleaner rag. You should use different colors for the rags because if the dusting rag hits the um, uh, shining rag, it won't be able to shine anymore. So don't let them touch one another. You will take two trips when you dust. The first trip you will do nothing but long dusting. So you really don't have to prepare your apron until you're done with the long dusting, but our cleaners did. Um, and then you'll do your long dusting. You will put the duster by the door and you will begin your short dusting. 
working your way around the room. When you are lawn dusting, you begin by the door and you keep moving in one direction. This is key. Don't go backwards. Don't, you don't move until you have dusted as far as you can reach to the right and, and the left, or to the left and the right. I don't care what direction you go in. Then you clean the baseboards before you step away from where you are. You touch reach as far as you can there. Then you step as far as you can when you're going to interlap your dusting and you do one more swipe around until you go all the way around the room. When you're looking up, if there's a the air vent, you clean the air vent. If you're passing your ceiling fan, you'll pass you'll clean your ceiling fans. You will clean all the way around the room and put the duster by the door. When you're training this, some of the common mistakes and the challenges you have to watch where people go wrong is number one, where to start. You start by the door, of course, so you know where you end. So you don't overlap, and of course, that's where your bucket is. So you can, well, actually, you probably won't have a bucket. But that's where you're going to want to leave the room, grab your dust, and go into the next room. You're going to dust the ceiling and... They're going to dust the ceilings, and they're going to want to move before they do the baseboard. When a brand-new person starts, they dust the ceilings. They're very proud of it. They go to the next spot, and I'm like, ah, 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 come on back and get the, or what did you forget? And they remember that they forgot the baseboard. So you go as far as you can on the top and on the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to make two trips around the room. Wasted steps, wasted time. Overdusting. When you are doing long dusting, you take one long swipe. You don't have to go back and forth. Cobb hard stuff to get off. The problem is they don't swipe once and they grow or they only do the ones that they can see and then when the client gets home and the light is shining a different direction, there's a whole bunch of them they didn't see. So take one quick room, swipe around the room but not back and forth. One quick swipe will get them unless you've not done this but once every six months and then you've got to work on those corners for a while. People will miss air vents. They will bypass them because they're looking at the wall and the ceiling and not the exact above the ceiling. They'll miss the ceiling fans. They'll go past it, not ever really looking at the middle of the ceiling. Uh, and they miss the tops of the curtain rods. And believe me, dirt so, dust so accumulates on top of curtain rods. That was somewhere we, some of the areas we got an amazing amount of dust in some of the homes that I visited in cross-country training. Once you're done, done with the lawn dusting, which should take a minute to two minutes to room, you don't try and ha get behind things. You get only what you can see on the baseboards and the high areas. Uh, if there are high windows, if there are high window sills, if there are big pictures, you dust anything you cannot reach with your arm and a feather duster. If you can reach it with your arm and a feather duster, then opt to that because it will always do a better job of dusting than the long dusting. But if you cannot reach it, then you need to do it with your long duster. Once you're done with this, then you'll start your short dust. You need to use a prepare, the prepared rags that you have in your pockets with the glass cleaner, and my recommendation is lemon oil. I've done lots of research on this. A little bit of lemon oil is good for furniture, uh, natural wood furniture, any, any wood furniture, because you should keep some suppleness in this furniture or it will dry out. If it actually has not, um, is not together, those notches will dry out and it will fall apart. Look at great grandma's furniture that was not taken care of and you have to fix it before you can use it because it didn't get enough oil. Don't use slathers of it with today's microfiber rag. It sucks it up so fast into the rag that there will be just enough on that rag and one rag will do a whole house. It's very inexpensive, but it leaves that wow look the look that someone will remark about and that's your concern, that people will remark about how wonderful your cleaning is. It so blows them away that they just have to post something on Craigslist or Antique Goods. Believe me, lemon oil, if you use correctly, will leave that wild look. We used it for 20 years. Very cheap, very effective. Got to know which pieces of furniture to use it on, so again, it's a training aspect. You will always work top to bottom, left to right around the room. Um, if you, you want to use the appropriate cleaning tool when you come to something. So if the first thing you come to is a mirror above an end table, you will get out your feather duster, do the frame around the mirror. Then you'll get out your Windex rag and your Windex for the mirror if it needs it. If it 
if it's very clean, you can just go ahead and feather dust it because if it's not dirty, don't fix it, or not broken, don't fix it, but you do want to feather dust it. Then you'll put your feather duster away and clean the items on your, and clean the dresser top. If there's items on the dresser top that the mirror is over, then first you will take your feather duster and clean the items, put your feather duster away, take out your rag, clean the surface of the dresser and the fronts and the sides, and go to your next area. If there's a picture hanging there, you put your dust rag away, grab your feather duster, and you will clean the picture again. So it's a process, but you don't pass anything without cleaning it. You don't do all the dusting first and then go back and do all the glass cleaning because on the second trip around, there's a very good possibility you will forget something. And on the first trip, especially on the second trip, you want to put everything away as soon as you clean it because you always want one hand empty to catch what is falling. This will result in a huge, huge reduction in your breakage and damage. If they've always got one hand there, especially when you're doing homes that have all these little trigger things hanging where they'll fall very easily. So it's not really your fault, but if you've got a hand, you can save it. What are some of the common challenges when you're training people who are learning to dust? They don't put their feather duster back in their pocket. They put it on the end table, or they keep it in their hand while they grab the rag, and now they're holding something. If it starts to fall, they've got the feather duster in their hand when they should be grabbing the item. Um, they put the rag on the couch instead of an apron, or I mean, constantly putting it back in your pocket when you're going to move something rather than setting it down somewhere to move something. Um, putting the feather dust away before they grab the rag, not using long strokes when they feather dust, feather dusting like a French maid. And if you're going back and forth and up and down like this where you're flicking your arm, it will get the dust off, yes, but all it does is flies up and then it's going to settle back down again. You want long strokes that reach towards the ground, and then it will be as effective as any tool could possibly be. Or they double clean. They feather dust, and then they come back and hard dust the same surface, and you don't have enough time to double clean the surface. If you follow this pr process every single time, you will always have perfect quality. You want to make two trips when you're cleaning almost everything. In the dusting, you take two trips, long dusting, short dusting. You follow the walls. You go top to bottom, and you clean to the walls except for the items in the middle of the room. When you're passing those items, you clean whatever you clean them at that time. Do not pass anything without cleaning it. Then it will be totally impossible to miss anything. Use the same process for each area, really. In the dusting, you do two trips. In the kitchen, you do two, two trips. The lawn dusting and then the short cleaning and shining. In the bathrooms, you take three trips. It will be awkward at first for your new people. It will be awkward for you. Remember, it takes 17 times to create a habit. So don't give up until you've created the habit in you. And then don't stop watching your new cleaners until they have created their habit. If you use the same process for new cleaners and for retraining your current people, I guarantee you your efficiency and your quality will improve by 50%. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act a habit. If you are interested in the core training DVDs, and I recommend you do have them, and many of you hopefully do, there are five modules. It's before you pick up a rag, how to clean a kitchen, how to clean a bathroom, how to long a short dust, beds, floors, and wrap up. If you don't have them, you can purchase them at www.successmadeeasy.com. Click on the training DVD samples on the toolbar and listen to them, and you can purchase them on the same page. I wish you the best of luck in your training. Please, for the sake of our industry, and for the sake of your company, and for the sake of your cleaners, safety, and commitment to excellence, take the time to train every single one of your people. Thank you for joining us, Hot. Civil Incident, a house cleaning process.